the one question I get asked more than most is, what's your favourite painting? Well, there was a couple of ones that I sold recently that I was really sad to see go. It's because you get really attached to them. And there's one that... Uh, there's one that I've just sold recently. And... Uh, I got really attached to this one. And that's cause there's a story behind this one. started with a phone call I got off my publisher at the time. He said, uh, Alex. Now he spoke like that because uh, he enjoyed the cigarette or two. And sometimes he enjoyed like every single day, black birds in the sky and get up. Anyway, he said, Alex, have you heard Vetriano sold the singing butler for three quarters of a million quid? So I said, three quarters of a million quid? Blimey. Anyway, he said, don't you think it would be a great idea to do our own version of the singing butler? But instead of putting all these romantic figures in, you can stick your gadgets in instead. I said, not a snowball's chance in hell am I going to do my own version of the singing busker. That painting belongs to the guy with the Italian sounding name. What do you mean he's not, that's not his real name? His real name's Hope. <laughs> so, after a lot of blethering and to and fro I was convinced to do this homage to the singing busker. Because uh, he says, you know, you two guys, the working class fellas, you know, you are, you're, you're both self-taught, you're both Scots, and you know how we Scots like to stick together. So I got my models together and uh, posed them in such a way that it resembled the original painting and we constructed Jig for Jack. And it was just one of those paintings that was just a joy to do and the, every brush stroke just followed onto the next one and it was just, it was lovely. Anyway, I said to the publisher, do what you like with the image regarding prints, etc. I want to keep the original for myself. So the print became a huge success and sold out in a matter of days and the publisher did it in two editions, they did it in a paper and on a canvas and they made a After a few weeks went past, I got another phone call from the publisher and he said, Alex, no, don't worry. And you know when somebody starts a conversation with, don't worry, you kind of tend to shit yourself. Anyway, he said, Veteran is suing you. I thought, I knew it was a bad idea from the start. I says to him, I says, did he not know that this was a homage to him? I even called it Jig for Jack. said that the man with the Italian sounding name is still suing you for Jig for Jack. So, what was happening in the great Babylon of the art world was that a well-known sex offender that was being represented by, by my publisher decided to jump ship and go with another fine art publisher 
who just happened to be their main rival. Now this main rival actually was representing the man with the Italian sounding name. So what happened was that my publisher decided to sue this well-known sex offender and his publisher. And in the end it all ended up like a whole load of businessmen waving their willies at each other to see who had the biggest one. So in the end I decided to keep the painting Jig for Jack and I had it in my house for years. Anybody came to the house that inquired about the painting, I would tell them that it was actually entitled Jig for Jack because of the wee Jack Russell in the painting, not for anybody with an Italian sounding name whose real name was Hope. So that's the story of Jig for Jack.